The Cascades within the scenic area are also worth visiting. Bifung Gorge's best features are its falling waters and lush forests, and walking along the trails, you might just find yourself very quickly losing track of time. So I've got my camera at the ready. We're inside Bifung Gorge, uh, the, the nature reserve inside, and we're off to see the carnivorous animals. I, we've got this van here that have uh, little holes for you to put food through. So hopefully this is going to protect us. Uh, <laughs> it feels like a prison, but I think we're going to be safe inside. Just don't put your hand through this hole. Remember that, remember. Do you know, we've not had lunch yet, so uh, this is looking very tasty to me. Oh, oh, no, 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 we'll save it for the lions with now. <laughs> Come on. Because you've got a longer tongue than that. Oh, that was incredible. You guys have to do this when you come here. It was exhilarating to feed the tigers and moon bears. And sitting there in the car, you're so close to them that you'll even feel the mud from their paws getting spattered onto your face. Just remember not to wave their food around and agitate them, as they can push your van over and try to get more than just a snack on a skewer. Gruesome endings aside, the next part of the zoo gives visitors the best opportunity to get up close and personal with its animals. So we've arrived at the bird's garden of beef and gorge. Let's go inside. Essentially a huge aviary enclosed by a mesh ceiling. It's a paradise for bird lovers and a great place for people of all ages to come. While I'm no expert, my limited knowledge of avian kind tells me there were cranes, cormorants, pelicans, herons and swans to name but a few. If you look at his eyes, he's got really clear black eyes and then this kind of red crest on top. It's, it's really beautiful. Feeding the birds is a great way to interact with them. And best of all, I got to do it without the nagging fear of losing a finger to ferocious carnivores. Hey, you I'll so this might look like it's for babies, but uh, actually it's not. It's fish feed, and for around five RMB or so, you can feed it to them through this bottle, which... <laughs> yeah, but probably not for humans. It's a bit like feeding a baby, except slightly more vicious. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not a father, but it's, it's giving you preparation for later in life. There you have it, there you have it. He's, uh, he's looking just like a panda, like lazily walking about. Okay, maybe I did get a bit overexcited, but this is one of the best places to see pandas in China. Ya'an's climate and its abundant bamboo forests make for a perfect panda habitat. In fact, the giant panda was actually discovered in Ya'an almost 140 years ago by a French missionary named Armand David. With over 150 giant pandas, including those moved from Wolong, Bifeng Gorge has one of the largest numbers of pandas in captivity in the world. There's even a research institute here to study breeding, and if you're lucky, you might just get to see newborn pandas.
I've been told that these pandas are around uh, one or two months old. And it's, it's hard to imagine that they're this size now, but they used to be around just the length of my index finger when they were first born. And then they grow into the huge pandas we saw earlier. That's, that's some pretty fast growth. Having had a long and eventful day at Bifon Gorge, it was about time for us to finally head back into town. So over the past few days, we've come to realise why Ya'an's called the rainy city, and also seen some of the lovely ladies Ya'an's famous for. But there's one more thing we mustn't miss before we leave, and that's to try Ya'an's specialty dish. It's fish. Let's go eat. This particular kind of fish can only be found in the Jogong River, a branch of the Qingyi River that flows through Ya'an. With its tender and delicate meat, this is Ya'an's signature dish, and mine is coming to me in the form of a fish stew. Ah, oh, that smells good. 那个，请问为什么上来就可以一个鱼头？因为养鱼头是养鱼的标志，它的头盖骨里面有一个跟宝剑一样的头骨。这个就是这个宝剑。哦，哇哦！你看哦，这就是从养鱼头上出来的宝
uh, this is this might just look like an average stone but this used to be used as a weightlifting tool back in the days and <laughs> this is 90 kilograms but they would lift it up and then turn it horizontal and use it to practice it's uh, it's a bit too heavy for my old back oh. <sighs> Ah, oh, this is more my level. Many of the Han family's descendants were excellent martial artists. And when one of the descendants obtained the number one spot in the national martial arts exam, most of Sichuan's officials came together and awarded him this huge plaque you see up there, which is around 200 years old. After a good workout at the Han abode, I find myself back on the streets of Shangli and in search of something to satisfy my hunger. I found a uh, local specialty. It's dry smoked ham and it's hard to the touch and it looks a bit scary, but actually it's, it's meant to be very nice. What they do is they put this above a charcoal fire and they smoke it for maybe, I think this one's probably two months or so, even up to a year. And uh, what you can do is dice it and chop it into pieces and stir fry it. It's meant to be very nice. And giant pandas are meant to really like this as well. Here in Shangli, you can't not pass by the rows of aunties and their steaming pots without wondering what's inside. There's a huge variety of local delicacies on offer here. And I highly recommend giving them all a try. Oh, this is beautiful. You've got this quaint little bridge with grasses draped over it and the misty mountains in the background. For me, Shangli has turned out to be quite a gem. If you come here, why not stay a while? And like you would with tea, savour its aroma, let it sink in, and have a taste of what life in Shangli is really like. Perhaps it's the fresh air or the relaxed pace of life here in Ya'an, but I've only been here for a couple of days and I feel refreshed already. It really is a shame that we have to leave this place because I would love to stay a bit longer and sample this Ya'an lifestyle, but we still have a very long way to go before we reach Shangri-La. I'm Tiran and I'll see you on the next episode of Travelogue.